Well, fingers crossed we are live and fingers crossed it's actually going to work. Who knows? So if you are here watching us on Facebook or YouTube, I would love you to comment to let me know whether you can see me or not, because it's not actually telling me today. So it would be lovely to know if it's actually working. Fingers crossed it is. If not, then I guess I'm going to be going without comments and we will whiz through it. And if it doesn't work, now it's asking me for actions. Oh, I hate technology people. That's why I craft, I don't do technical craft. I do hands-on crafts. Fingers crossed, whoever in the world is watching me um, is seeing it. Hopefully. So if any of my family members are watching it, it would be great if somebody could contact me and let me know that it's working in some way, shape or form, i.e. Martin or Mama. Um, if not, then we're just going to go with it. And at the moment, I'm having no comments coming through. So we will assume that I'm not going to have comments and we will just work through. Who knows? Now, my mother-in-law just said she liked it, but it's not showing up on here. So it is a no comments session today. Don't we love it? Now, here we go. Uh, th those of you that watched our Create and Craft TV last week, um, we were on last Wednesday the 8th at 7pm, which has been a long time since we've done a, a night shift one. And it's a bit strange doing the evenings there. It's like a ghost town, you know, it's lovely. But anyway, thank you very much for those of you that did watch and did fill your baskets. We are just about to the end of all the orders. It has been mad, manic, panic to get everything done, but I think we have just about got there, which is great news. Um, as far as... Um, the demos, we did manage to get four of those in, which was really nice. And I did say on there that I would do um, the way a, one of the particular cards, the card I did with Changing Blooms, which was this one. Um, I did say I would do Facebook Live to show you how to, to make this card, because it's kind of like a... Now, obviously the way I make it might not be the way that you're all gonna choose to make it. I'm just gonna show you the way I did it. And if that's how you want to do it, great. And if it, you find another way that's easier, please let me know. Um, it does take a little bit of patience to do it. Um, it's not difficult. It's just things move when you don't want them to. And that always drives me insane. But we'll get through there. And um, you've got to have plenty of space on your table. So if you're like me, um, I'm taking it that we are no comments because I'm getting a few pop up, nobody from um, YouTube. So yeah, we'll go no comments and have fun. I'll go back and read everybody's afterwards. Um, so yeah, if you craft like I do, you start off with a big space and end up with a really small one, then you need to clear it to do this part of the thing, of the card. Anyway, that's enough of me waffling, let's get on to this. So this is what we're going to be using. Unfortunately, Changing Blooms, which is the one that we did this card with, is on um, pre-order for Dispatch, I think around about the 24th-ish of um, November, so we next week grief has come around fast so i haven't done it with changing blooms i'm doing it with a different um stamp uh well i suppose it gives you a different idea for it too doesn't it i've just noticed that one of my lights is out i think the bulb must have gone while i was setting up hang on a minute well hey i'm back that's a bit better right so as i say changing blooms is on pre-order you can still get it it's just got to be pre-ordered and it will be dispatched next week. So what are we using? We're gonna be using Versamark ink, Distress Oxides in Shabby Shutter, Spun Sugar, and Picked Raspberry. And you'll all be pleased to know I no longer have a squeaky chair, but my floor started to squeak. We live in a um, 500 year old house, so the floor creaks a little bit. So. I think now that my chair's not squeaking, you're going to pick up the floor. So, oh, hey ho. Um, and we do need an anti static bag. We're using vellum and acetate. So, the anti static helps with that. Although, there are parts of this that the static in your um, acetate is quite handy to have. And it will make sense as we're going along. 
We've got blending brushes. I'm actually going to be using our big ones. They're out of stock at the moment. They will be coming back, but we do have a few of the smaller ones still in stock. Again, very low stocks on those, so they will be coming back in soon. We are using two different uh, embossing powders. We've got white opal and white white. We've got sticky glue in the large um, 120ml or in the 300ml. 300ml, as if that's 300ml, 30ml. Um, we are using, we'll come back to the stamps in a second. Um, we're using the uh, clear acetate, the construction thickness-ish. So it's 250 GSM. Um, we've got vellum sheets. You get five in there. This is the vellum that we use for making flowers, but I use it for everything. Um, and then we've got the white cardstock that we come in 250 or 300 GSM. Right, down to the stamps. I need a little table beside me, I've decided now. We're getting there, we're getting there. We're nearly got it organized. As I say, I can't see anybody's comments. So if you are mentioning your, or you are coming up and saying hello, I apologize. And I'll keep mentioning that throughout for those of you that miss us as we miss the start of us as we're going through. <coughs> Excuse me. So these are the, the um, stamp options. I'm going to be using Social Butterfly, which is this one. Um, and you've got, doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be perfect to inspire. Social Butterfly and Birthday Wishes. <coughs> Why is it when I start doing this, I end up having a coughing fit? Hopefully that's them that. Um, the other butterfly we have is Flutterby. This has a little bit more um, fine detail on it. It is a mirror image, whereas this one isn't a mirror image. Um, there is some fussy cutting, so it's up to you. With this one, you would only have to cut. You'd cut one and it would cut the two sides, if that makes sense. Um, and then I've also popped in here our butterfly wishes, which is sentiments that go really well with butterflies. So we've got Flutterby fluttering by with best wishes today would be a lovely day to be a butterfly those we love don't go away they walk beside us every day um butterfly kisses and birthday wishes and then you've got a social butterfly with a little bit of a squiggle underneath so these two are quite nice for sympathy cards <coughs> so if you do have those to make that is really quite nice it's not necessarily something that's mm, with deeper sympathy blah 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 um, which also has its place. Excuse me, I'm trying to get rid of this tickle. <clears throat> but, um, yeah, that's something that's maybe a little bit different if you wanted something a little bit different to pop in your card. Anyway, let's get on to what we need. As I've said to you, it's a little bit of a more fussy card. It takes a little bit longer to get going. Um, but once, <laughs> once you've started it, you won't stop. So, 8 by 8 card. And then we have, so you need 20 strips, half inch strips. Now I've done it as 20. If you start playing with this and find a different way of doing it where you can do it, you can cut bits off and not use a full strip, then feel free to do that. This is just an easy way for me to show you on, um, on a live how to do this. I'll show you a little trick to do with cutting the strips as well. You also need um, two pieces of white cardstock, which is where we're gonna pop our sentiment. So one is two and a three eighths by seven and three eighths. I know you will hate me for that. But unfortunately, with our cards bases, because of the way they're cut, um, or the sizes they're cut, they're cut to do an eight by eight envelope rather than an actual eight by eight, true eight by eight card. So everything's slightly smaller, which makes all of these sense, um, Measurements a little bit squiffy. And then we have one that is um, two and a quarter by seven and five eighths. And then we need a piece of acetate and a piece of vellum. Now this is the heavyweight acetate. And then I've just got a piece of cardstock here to show you about cutting um, your half inch strips. Because you won't believe how many times when we're at workshops I have people say to me, my trimmer doesn't do half inches. And I had this discussion with, with my mum yesterday, and I said, because she was measuring something and her um, trimmer was a little bit, her trimmer measured differently to mine, and it didn't have the half inches on. 
so I am going to try and bring our camera in. I'm going to try. Now, obviously an A4 piece of paper in the UK here um, is eight and a quarter inches. And I want to cut half inches. So to make my life simpler, I'm going to move my piece of paper. Now we are A4 length. So I'm going to move my piece of paper to the eighth inch and I'm just going to sacrifice that small quarter of an inch of the edge. If you want, you can keep it. If you're making smaller cards and do what we're doing, you've got, already got a strip cut. And then every time you move it half an inch backwards and you slice, the strip that comes off is half an inch. So no trimmer that I know of has a half inch down here. And to try and balance a half inch on here would be horrendous. But by just moving it half an inch each time, you gain your half inch strips. So I'm hoping that makes sense to everybody. Obviously I'm not gonna cut out 20 strips while you're all waiting, because I've already done it. But if anybody's got any further questions on that, please let me know um, in the comments. I will go back and read comments after the show because I have no clue why it's not doing it. But at least it didn't throw us off, off the website today, which is a bonus. So, so, so. You're going to take your 8x8 eight eight card. I'm actually going to bring ourselves out a little bit more again now because we won't get everything in the screen. Now you've probably got too much going on on here, but hey-ho, I'm sure you don't mind. So we've got our 8x8 eight eight card. Again, I want two and a half inches left on. So I'm going to take the spine of the card, which is here, where it folds, and I'm going to line that up with the two and a half inches. And I'm going to cut that off. I'm then going to use the bit that I've cut off and cut just under two and a half inches probably about two and seven eighths if that makes sense literally an eighth off and i want to keep this piece not the waist so i don't want the bit that i've cut off i want the piece that's left on here for this particular piece that should be just slightly smaller than your piece that's left attached to your card. Now the reason being is that's gonna go inside and hide all your workings. If you did it at exactly two and a half inches, where this card folds, that one eighth of an inch, and Maisie's just run up the stairs and she's gonna want on her windowsill and she's gonna bark. So if she does, bear with me, I'll go and put her up there because otherwise she will not shut up. <laughs> she's like a, a dog with a bone, as they say. So that's gonna go in there, but if we, did it exactly two and a half inches it would hang out just over oh, you can't really see all of this because it's white on white but it would hang out just over the edge of the card and it wouldn't look particularly pretty so that's why we do it just that little bit smaller i have got the nosiest dog in the world as well As I say, if she does start to bark, I will jump up quickly and move her. No, she's going to decide to eat the distress oxides instead. Bear with me a moment, ladies and gentlemen. I'm back. I will turn you round. I will show you. I wonder if this will work. Let's see if we can make this work. Can you see where Maisie is? That's Maisie's favourite place to sit and watch the world go by. So you've got me back now. There you go. So hopefully now she'll sit there really quietly and enjoy life. Right, back to what we were doing. So I'm now going to go to the acetate. Try and handle this as small amount as possible. Now, I always cut my acetate tucked inside my card because I'm going to tuck it inside my card and I do want it to be as near as possible to the size of my card. Swiss 
sweet innocence of Maisie, hey? So, without cutting anything off my card, we hope, I'm going to line that up. If you don't want to do it like this and you want it measured, then go ahead and measure it. If I've cut something off my card, so big it right now. Oh, look, a whole amount of that came off my card. I think I can cope with that. And then I'm going to do the same on the corner. I can hear myself repeating myself from downstairs. So if my mum is listening, can she shut the door so I can't hear myself echo? <laughs> I hate listening to myself talking on here. I hate listening to myself talking back. I never watch the TV shows back because I hate listening to myself talking. So that should then be your card insert, acetate insert, really. Now, if you spun it round, you'll find that there's a very slight difference in size, which is exactly why I do what I do. Turn it round. And that is going to fit tucked up inside there. You're not going to do anything else with that now for a few minutes. But as I say, it's quite handy that this has got some static on and it will make sense to you in a little while. Um, so yeah, that's your card base cut out, ready to go. And I'm going to now do these bits. So I've tried lots of different ways. If you want to, you're quite and you're happy to, you can just literally stick your strips on here and across if you're happy to do it like that. I quite liked the fact that it had sort of the baskety weavy effect on here, um, which is why I changed the way I did it. And it looks like I'm being really complicated and I probably am doing it really complicated, but it's the way that I wanted to do it. So that's what we'll do. So I start with these, I'm um, better starting with three than two. So we have got three and three. Now I tried earlier by laying them all out. That made it even more complicated. I've got one piece at the bottom. I'm going to tuck this underneath in that top corner. The next one I'm going to lay on top. And the next one I'm going to tuck underneath. Now all of this is done by eye, so it's entirely your choice what you do. The next one on top, and the next one underneath. Now you're going to have chance to fiddle around with this and get them as close a, a match as you can. As I say, it is all done by eye. If you want to measure it all out, feel free. Um, I didn't want to, which is very unlike me. I did try lost my temper with it so I thought you know what it doesn't have to be perfect remember what that saying is on that set of stamps what does it say it doesn't have to be perfect to inspire hopefully this will make sense so the next one I'm going to tuck underneath so this is a bit of a slow laborious task but I just wanted to show you the whole thing from start to finish rather than have too much of it done in stages. I do get the odd um, somebody somebody liked our comment, our page, or liked what we were doing. So if you are just joining me, unfortunately we have no comments coming through today, so I can't answer any questions. But I hope you're all well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. I'm too too many. I think I no ten. I think I've done 10 and 10, yes, yeah, sir. And then we've got one. Here we go. So on this bottom one, the outside one is tucked underneath. So the, this is, sorry, the outside one is tucked underneath and this is, the cross one is on top. So this time I'm going underneath that one, on top of the next one, underneath that one. I need to move it all down a little bit, don't I? Because you can't see what I'm doing. We'll start again. So we're going under, over, under, 
and the more you do this the more stable it gets over under over under if it goes <laughs> over under over so it's basket weave I'm just going to hold those there hopefully and slide that down a little bit and as I say the more you do the more um, secure this all starts to get and sturdy it gets and you will be moving these around a lot so don't panic about it you just need to get them kind of together so the next one we were under on the last one on the first one so we're over on this one over under over under over under over under over under and again I'm gonna slide that down hopefully it'll all start to hold itself together and you're gonna keep repeating that and I know this is gonna not be the most exciting thing to watch but as I said I wanted you to see it all from the start to the finish I got asked for the die for this so many people thought it was a die and it's not a die it's nice and I don't think you would get the effect with the die because you don't get that over under weaving sort of thing you would just get the cutouts which would still look nice so again this one is over on the first under on the second over on the third under on the fourth over on the fifth under on the sixth over on the seventh under on the eighth over on the ninth under on the tenth and I've done 20 because that's roughly worked out quite well on the side. So under, over, under, over. And as you can see, it as more strips get added in, it becomes more sturdy. So it's starting to kind of hold itself together a little bit better now. Just those first ones going in are not much fun. And so we keep repeating and repeating and repeating until we've done enough. There are ways around this to make it use less cardstock. You can cut and paste and stick bits and pieces in. This is the, just the quickest way for me to show you um, on a, a live. Otherwise, we might be here a while. I think we've been we'll have been here long enough doing this. And then over, under, over, under. Oh, this one's going to tease me. And you can see that you don't then have to kind of hold it so much. Two, four, six, eight, nine. One more. Oh, Maisie just took, made it the biggest sight. She's curled up and gone sound asleep now. She'll sit there for hours. I'm up here hours at a time and she just, as long as she can hear me and she can see me, she's happy. She's all curled up in her bed now watching the world go by. <laughs> nice life if you can get it. She's the most sport dog I've ever had, I think. Everybody tells me she is anyway. Right, now the trick is to try and get these level again. And you know, it doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. But I do kind of like a square to be a square-ish. So, me being me... I'm going to start tucking this in this bottom corner here and I'm going to pop a tiny little bit of glue on this first one just in this corner and hopefully by putting that there and there it's square on both corners so hopefully the rest will all follow. Just give that a couple of seconds to get hold and then I'm going to do the same with the next upright one. Just a couple of little, tiny, and I mean the tiniest little dot, you probably can't even see it. The tiniest little dot of glue just to hold that down roughly 
as near as you can get it by eye as the gap is the same as width as that. As I said, I'm not going to go bonkers over this. And the same again with the next one. And if you try and get the ends level on your strip at the bottom, it does make your life a little bit easier. But if they're not perfectly level, again, it doesn't matter. So I'm sorry, it's not the most exciting thing to watch me do. I know that. But I wanted you to see the whole process. That's a sneaky little one. He sneaked up the wrong side. Tuck him back underneath. Pop him under there. There we go. How naughty. And in fact, one's done that on my the card we did on TV and I didn't notice it until I photographed it. And I'm not undoing it now. So I know, I apologise for it not being the most riveting thing to watch me do. And by sticking these few down, it does make a difference to how sturdy this becomes. Okay, and I'm going to do the same along here now on this side. And it will start to make it all much more secure and there is a real optical illusion here so give yourself a break if these aren't straight it looks like your original piece isn't straight and then it will throw you all off so we're going to bring this piece in and uh, this is the bit that will take you the longest to do As I said, I didn't want to do too much of this ahead because then you don't actually see that it's, we all have hiccups doing them as well, if that makes sense. We all find it doesn't always all come together straight away. Those ones that aren't stuck down yet will still fight you because we've got to flip that over to make those ones stick. I love doing things like this, but not everybody does, and I understand that. So you kind of need to have a little bit of patience when you're doing this one. And when I first did this, I did it without the basket weave part to it, and I don't think it was anywhere near as effective. And if I can find the piece that I was doing, I will show it to you. So you can see, it does work, still has an effect, just a different effect. I hate doing these lives without having you chit chatting to me as well. So hopefully you're all <laughs> enjoying what you're seeing. And if you do go back and watch it on catch up, you can always shuffle through these bits of me now if you don't want to watch me. <laughs> I'm sure lots of you do. Don't need to hear me waffling. So that's roughly your squares. As you can see, they're not all perfect. I'm then just going to flip this over and do exactly the same again. And that means that all of the sides are stuck at, some, at a point. very very quiet in here without having questions to answer so 
I've got to keep, you're going to have to have me waffle even more than normal. I seem to have developed an air bubble in my glue, which is perfect because it's releasing just the right amount each time. <laughs> but we'll stand that up for a second. Spin that round and we're doing the same again over here. And I know some of you will love doing this as much as I like doing this kind of thing, and some of you won't. And you'll find another way of doing it. And if you do, let me know. Because I always like other options. So that's the whole thing sort pretty much held together-ish. Right. So we're now going to go over. I want to put the card together before... I am um... now if you look at that we're not going to have any grid up here so what you need to do if we go that way around it might make it easier is it going to make it easier is it no it's not going to make it easier I'm going to stay working on this side and I'm going to take my piece of acetate and line it up roughly where it means the whole piece will get gridded. In fact, we could probably do with another couple of strips which would get these corners gridded. I'm not going to. What I will do is pop an extra strip in there once we're stuck together. So roughly Oh, and I mean really roughly, and I did have a pen here two minutes ago. I'm just going to kind of mark out here. Because I want to cut that piece off that we've just spent all that time gluing together. I know it sounds bonkers, doesn't it? Which means I'm going to really, really quickly just go along because I did do this earlier and I wondered if I could get away without doing it, but I'm not going to be able to. I'm going to stick these pieces down really quick too. I'm sorry it's not exciting, but it is what this card is. To get the effect you want, you need to spend that little bit of time to do it. Same again, really, really fast, where we haven't stuck. Doesn't want to lift for me now. It's a bit weird, isn't it, when I keep going quiet? I'm sorry. <laughs> Flip it over and do the same again. And I know I am really sorry. I'm trying to go as quick as I can to get these bits done for you. I've already flipped it over. What am I doing here? Yeah, I flipped over. Just hadn't spun it round. And this one is pretty, they're pretty much all in place now, so you aren't having to do too much adjusting. Yeah, I think we're all stuck now. So I've marked mark those lines, and then if you've got a really strong trimmer, because I've got quite a thick cardstock here, use your trimmer to do this. If you haven't, then I'm just going to grab a pair of scissors and snip them off. It doesn't have to be perfect because you're not going to see it, it's going to be completely hidden underneath. If you're clever, keep that piece and you've got a corner piece ready for something else. So, back to building our card. 
pop your acetate in there. Make sure it's the right way around for how you've cut it because one way will fit, one way will be too long with these particular cards anyway. And this piece is going to tuck in under here. So here and here I'm going to be short on my weave but I'm just going to stick a piece in there afterwards. So push those in as far in as they will go. Now you don't want glue going all over this so I'm going to take my glue and I'm not even going to go right to the edge of my cardstock here. I'm just going to put a scribble in here and quite a heavy amount of glue in here because it's got to hold all of this and catch that acetate at the same time. Okay, so now hopefully, nope, it didn't catch the acetate, so we will do some on here as well. But I'm going to close it back on the acetate. This is going to be one of those videos where you're going to do a bit, stop it, start it, stop it, start it, all the way through, I think. But hopefully it will come together. Now, again, if you've got a trimmer that's a fairly strong trimmer, I would use a trimmer to do it. I'm just going to quickly grab the scissors and cut these pieces off. without cutting the card, I hope. It's difficult to cut these and keep it in camera for you to see. Go ahead and tidy those up. You can do that way round and I hate to say it but we've got another little bit of sticking to do some pieces that move around a little bit don't panic because it can all be put back together and you may go in back in and do a little bit more trimming because a few pieces moved while we did that and again back in with a little bit of glue just to hold these back in place this piece needs to come in there now because that piece is wanting to fight me I am gonna pop a little bit of glue there now and then that will be that piece in place and it's not going to keep moving. So be aware when you're cutting it that this is going to happen and it doesn't matter, you just go in and do exactly what I'm doing now. You just originally had your basic hold and you've pretty much cut that all off now by doing what we just did. So all those ends that you cut haven't stuck now you're going to go back in and stick them back down this piece wants to fight me but a piece of card isn't going to beat me Oh, I so wish we had comments that I could read for this now because this can't be the most riveting of watches. Anything above this section doesn't matter because it's all going to be held together. Anything below needs to hold on. done we're then going to flip it over 
and just where you can see the white underneath, I'm going to pop that piece of cardstock that we cut that was just that little bit shorter than the two and a half inches. So that hides all our workings. Now I haven't stuck those two pieces together because I don't want you to see the, the um, glue through here. And although the glue dries clear, you'd still see it. So that's the card base put together. And you can now understand why I didn't do that on TV, those of you that watched us, because um, it will take us too long. Now this little section here, remember I said that I wanted to put that in. That's what I'm going to do. And I might even do it on the other side as well. So we're still a little bit out from finishing it. Not too bad now. Okay. And we'll trim those pieces off. Don't think it's going to make that much difference over here if I'm truthfully honest. I think it will make enough to make it worth putting it in, personally. I'm going to have a lot to hold on to, but it's there. As I say, that's up to you whether you want to do that or not. You don't have to. Oh, grief, come on, somebody give me a break. There we go. So that's our grid put together for the card. And as I say, you've got pieces that you've chopped off that you can keep and use those as sections for other pieces on other cards, if you fancy. You might see them come up in other places with me. That one's gonna drive me mad because it's not quite on the edge, but we're gonna cover that anyway. Right, that's the hard part done. And it isn't hard, it's just fiddly. Okay. Right, so let's get on to the fun stuff. We now need to take our vellum, anti-static bag on your vellum, and try and handle it as least amount as possible. We're gonna take our social butterfly stamp and the Versamarker ink, and lots and lots of little light taps all over. ink your stamp up. Now because I'm going on to vellum with Versamark which is designed to stay open and sticky and wet for longer, you'll get first and second generation stamping out of this. So I'm going to do the first one, press it down. You need to press it down to make sure the ink transfers but don't press it really 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 hard because you want to pick up, still pick up the detail of the smaller butterflies and then I'm going to spin it round and I'm going to do the same on the other side without re-inking it. You could probably get a third generation out of this, but I don't need three. I've only got need two. So that's all I'm going to do. And then we're going to take our two different types of embossing powder. So I'm going to go with the white one first. And I'm going to sprinkle that all over the bottom half. Now that white embossing powder will stay there. It won't transfer if I do the other one before I heat it, which is what I'm gonna do. I'll take the white opal. So this is the white opal, so it's a white powder with a glitter in it. And we'll sprinkle that over the top. And again, give that a flick to take the excess off. And hopefully with the anti-static bag, you won't have got any fingerprints in there. But to be honest with this one, it wouldn't be hugely a huge problem if you did. It wouldn't show up hugely. Oh, that makes my teeth go when that does that. So because I'm heating on vellum, I'm going to hold it in the air 
to allow the heat to travel through. And just for quickness, because you don't want to heat it too much, I'm going to heat from the top, which is not often how you'll see me heat embossing. I normally would heat from underneath because it will give you a smoother finish, but with this particular one, it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to get my heat gun warm. And as the powder melts, make sure you keep it moving, but you're not blow drying your hair. Don't wiggle it around like so. Just literally let the powder chase you, or you chase the powder, whichever you want, you want it to be. And obviously, as that powder melts, it becomes a solid. Be careful, it gets very hot for a couple of seconds. As it melts, don't go sticking your fingers straight and then you'll know about it. And then the same with the white one. And without the glitter, you'll notice that it does um, melt much, much faster. And that's it. That's the heat embossing done. So you've now got your two butterflies. You're going to turn that over. And I'm going to take my inks. So we've got spun sugar and shabby shutter. And we're going to take them. Don't need shabby shutter at the minute. We just need the pink one. Shabby shutter comes in further down the line. So we're going to take out um, ink load the brush up or whatever blending tool you have you can use the blending brushes you can use the blending sponges you can use those smoothies that were out you can use pretty much anything and you're just literally laying the card the ink onto the back of that image now the sponge sugar is quite pale but it really does lend itself to this particular design i think personal choice um but if you wanted to go in with a darker pink or a darker colour, it also works really well. Um, I've just chosen the lighter pink on this occasion and I'm hoping you'll be, all be able to see that it is going down and changing colour. And as you layer the, the um, two butterflies together, the colour becomes a lot more intense, which is why I opted for the lighter colour, because I don't want it to be too overpowering on this card, because I quite like the subtle finish to it. Now, as I mentioned earlier, these two are not symmetrical, so you can't fold one butterfly over to cut the second, the, the other um, wing. You can't fold one wing over to cut the other wing. So you do need to, um, I know you're not gonna like me, it is a fussy cut. So you are fussy cutting this. But you, I'm not asking you to go in and out of every single butterfly. If you would prefer not to, you don't have to. If you want to, you can. Or you can do a little bit of both. I'm only going to cut one of these out, but what I mean by going in and out of every little butterfly, I always start on the more solid side, on one side of it, I haven't cut the whole thing out. Now on this particular one, I have gone quite close to the edge of the cut, because I love to fussy cut. If you're not great at it, I'm not saying I'm great at it, but I like doing it. If you're not great at it, if you leave yourself a little bit of a margin around the edge, which I'm just about to show you, because... When I go in and do these butterflies, you'll see. So I'm kind of just giving it a little bit of shape. I'll try and bring that into focus so that maybe you can see or not see. Um, I'll go into a bigger butterfly and you'll be able to make it out. I have already cut these out, so you don't need to panic. You're not going to sit and watch me cut all of this out. So you're going to leave yourself, and please don't try and cut around every one of those antennae because you will lose the will to live. If you can see, there's a really, really, I've left myself a little gap all the way around the edge of that butterfly. Okay, I'm trying to do it so you can catch it. Hopefully that makes sense to everybody. Um, I have to make myself stop doing things like this because I love doing it. So just give yourself that little bit of an edge and don't panic about going around all of that antennae. Let me try and get something that will make this stand out. Maybe the black one. Can, does that make it easier? You can see 
doesn't have to be perfect. Okay. So once you've cut those out, you will end up with two butterflies like so. I have kept the antennae on on these, but you don't have to. That's entirely up to you whether you do that or not. So then we're going to take our butterfly and I'm just going to nip either side of his body, which will give me almost like a little shelf to a book, book bind, I suppose, the spine of a book. And I'm going to do that on both of those butterflies. If you want, you can shape the wings a little bit to make them stick up if that's what you would like but you don't have to just gives it a little bit of a slight shape I think I prefer it going that way so I'm going to go back on that one and just do that and all I'm doing is taking a kebab stick and running it behind it like you would if you were going to um, curl ribbon with scissors type thing but it's just a kebab stick and we're going to lay out one on top of the other now obviously these are not perfectly matched don't want that to be quite so tight and I'm putting the plain one underneath and the sparkly one on the top waffled for nearly an hour already I know some people ask me to have a longer thing me but it's difficult when I'm just chatting to myself and you are pretty much seeing this whole card come together from start to finish the only bit you've not seen me do is cut that those butterflies out maybe five to ten minutes to cut those two out add that into your planning we want our butterfly to stick and I'm going to pop that to one side for a moment I'm then going to take if I can find what I've done with them here we go our two pieces of white cardstock now one of them I wanted to add a little bit of oomph to it um, I felt just the pink on the white it needed a, a, a second colour in there or a third colour in there so I've taken the green on the bottom layer, the, so the larger of the two pieces of white cardstock, and just popped some green all the way around that edge. And that's all I did with the green. That's all it took. So it looks like, I'll bring it up closer to the screen so you can see. There you go. So we've literally just highlighted it. I'm going to take this smaller piece. And I'm just going to pop some anti-static over there. And I think... Um, today would be a lovely day to be a butterfly. Yeah, I think that's what we'll put on there. On the front. I tidied up before I started this. No, I can't find anything. I'm going to take some picked raspberry because I want a darker pink to make this stand out roughly in the middle I think we're in the middle who knows it will be what it will be at this point And so we've got today will be a lovely day to be a butterfly. I suddenly thought I'd done those the wrong way around. Okay. I am going to just go around with the lighter pink now. Around the edge of this one. Because I feel it needs to be blended a little bit. So those of you that um, know about us, we are running workshops 
up and down the country. Um, we did have one up in Lee. That was our first ever workshop. Uh, we have think we have found another venue for those of you that want our Lee one. And we are looking for at the middle of March. Unfortunately, it will be a weekday if we go with the particular hotel we have cho have looked at. Um, hopefully, I'll be able to let everybody know about that next week. Uh, we also have got one happening at the Ravenwood Hotel in Suffolk, um, which was originally the 27th of January. And unfortunately, circumstances beyond our control means we are now have moved it to the 3rd of February, which is just a week later. But it's Saturday, the 3rd of February, and we do still have a handful of places left available on that particular workshop. So I'm now going to stick these two together. Maisie just let out the biggest sigh as if to say, for goodness sake, get on with it. And it literally is just a really, really fine border all the way around that I've given this. Okay. And we're going to stick that on our card. Across the top there. Now, I'm going to do a little trick, which I hadn't thought about doing before, and it may not work, but I'm going to try it. And as you all witness to it, we'll find out. I am going to use the piece I cut off as a little bit of a stencil and see how it works. That does just mean now that if I use this again, it has to be pink ish it's worked i might need a heavier pink but i just thought hmm, i want to do something inside what am i going to do so that's what i've done it might not show up very well on screen but that's all it did just a, little, a few little squares in there which actually looks quite cool i quite like it just a little hint in there. Oh no! I flipped it over onto my ink pad. The butterflies just changed sides. <laughs> I got carried away. added a little bit of texture inside. I was going to put the butterfly on this side, but we now have green ink on, on there. So I think our butterfly is going on that side now. No, he's still going over there. What are we going to do there? Hmm. So we're going to stick our butterfly on the corner there. no way that's going to work oh well we have a little bit of green on there it's not going to kill you it's not going to make you pregnant I'm going to stick our butterfly in here and I suppose you could stick a smaller butterfly on there if you wanted to you can go around and ink the edge should we try that see whether that works take our green and ink around the edge it might make a complete disaster but we'll try I suppose it worked ish yeah it covered most of the error up see you can't really you can see a little blob there but I'm afraid that's just gonna have to be there right. I'm also gonna grab a couple of little gems 
And I feel pearls are a good one for this. And take a couple of little pearls off here if they're going to play ball with me. If they're going to play ball with me. Won't be using that one then. <sighs> My stickies are sticking to the acetate. Oh, good grief. See, this is why I don't do an hour. up and there is our social butterfly basket weave card so this is a take on the one that we did do on create and craft tv which was using our changing blooms stamp set so that's another version of it this one i made the top two inches i knew this probably was going to be that sentiment so that's why i've made it slightly bigger um, we need to pop a sentiment inside, don't we? I'm going to put the lid on my inks before I do any more. After that little bit of fun and games. And then I'm going to put those we love that don't go away. They walk beside us every day. be a heavy ink for this one. Whoever's going to read it will be able to see this. So I've just used shabby shutter again in there. Those we love don't go away, they walk beside us every day. So there we go, one finished card. So that was basically about teaching you how to do that basket weave that everybody thought was a stencil. Um, oh, sorry, a die. Um, it's not, it's done with your cardstock and you. So they're the two different effects that, you've, that I've done with the same layout. So I'm gonna give you me back for a moment. Um, so actually I'll probably better to Come back there, sorry. I'm going to show you, run through exactly what we used again, just so that you know. And then I can tell you the last few things you need to know before I'm done. So what did we use? We used vellum, which is the vellum that we use for flower making, but you can use it for everything. We've used some heavier weight acetate. Ours is the 250 for five sheets. It's a 250 GSM, you get five sheets in there. And then we've got the white cardstock, which is in 250 GSM or 300 GSM. You've also got the Versamark ink. And the inks I've used today are Picked Raspberry, Spun Sugar and Shabby Shutter. We have used the sticky glue that comes in the two sizes. We've used the white opal embossing powder and the white white embossing powder. Your anti-static bag, which is really, really needed for your vellum. You don't want fingerprints all over that if you can help it. And blending tool. Obviously, we use blending brushes, but whatever tool you have to hand. So the stamps we have used. Get rid of all of this. Stamps we've used are Social Butterfly, which says it doesn't have to be perfect to inspire. Birthday wishes and social butterfly. And then we, the sentiment we've used here was today would be a lovely day to be a butterfly. Those we love that don't go away, they walk beside us every day. Fluttering by with best wishes, social butterfly and butterfly kisses and birthday wishes. You also get a small little butterfly on there too, which we could have used. 
And then we also have our Flutterby. So if you don't want um, the more solid butterfly, we've got this lovely, um, really fancy. And you can do more than one layer. You can do two or three layers. And you can also colour this one in if you would prefer as well. So they're the different stamps that we've used today. Right, that's me waffling. So what have we got to tell you about um, coming up? So I've mentioned the change of date on the Suffolk workshop. Um, so we've gone from the 27th of January to the Saturday, the 3rd of um, February. So just a week later. Um, and there are a couple of less than a handful of places left on there. So if you're umming and ahhing, um, if you are interested in doing it, you might need to be quite quick for those places now that we've had the date change. Um, remember that little note I, or trick I told you about with your half inch on your trimmers. Be aware of that. Also, one thing that we did notice this week, um, mum was working on something and I measured it on my trimmer and it was about a quarter, an eighth of an inch out, which doesn't seem a lot, but it's actually quite a lot if you are um, sort of working to those eighths of an inch. It make a big difference on something. Uh, so just be aware that if you are working on a project, use the same trimmer for the whole project. It won't matter if they measure up differently to another trimmer at that time. Um, because you're using the same one. Since I turned Maisie, you around to see Maisie, you're on the scriff. Um, what else we need to tell you? Uh, our next live will be, can you believe it? I can't believe we're there already, the 29th of November, which is Thursday at 2 o'clock, the 29th of November. Um, what else we need to tell you? Our last show of the year, can you believe? Motorcycle Museum, the paper... Um, Excalibur Papercraft Fair is Saturday the 25th of November. It's the last event on the Papercraft calendar, I believe. I don't think there's another one anywhere else in the country. And then we are back on Crate and Craft TV in December on the 13th. Again, a 7pm show. So it would be lovely if you would like to join us for that one too. Christmas show is always quite good fun. So hopefully you'll be able to join me for that. Um, what else do I need to tell you about? Ah, yeah, we've also got the workshop in, we're doing a workshop in Coventry this weekend, which is completely full. We will hopefully be able to launch dates on that next week for next year. I just need them to confirm the dates that we've been looking at with them. And then those will be released next week, hopefully. Uh, what else do we need? So, yeah, and we've got a workshop in Newcastle. We have two days in Newcastle next April. We are the 20, Saturday the 20th, which is fully booked. And Sunday the 21st of April, my birthday, um, that still has, again, a handful of places left. So if anybody would like to join us up in Newcastle, there are some spaces available on that one as well. I think that's everything I need to tell you about. Um, we are doing our best not to have to send out too many emails because I know we all get hundreds of emails every day. So if I do send out an email, there's usually something I need to tell you about. So it's worth pinging in there to have a quick look. Or you can pop on our website and register for our newsletter which means you will get the information there. Uh, we have our Facebook groups. We've got the Honeydew Crafts Facebook page and we have also got our Honeydew Crafts Be Inspired Facebook page, which is the one that you need to um, ask to join, which is where you can post all your, your fabulous projects that you've all been working on. And I love seeing what everybody's done. So it would be great to have some more of you join in there and showing us all your bits and pieces. Um, and then obviously we've got the YouTube channel. So all of the videos that we film are all available over on our YouTube channel. So you can pop over there and have a look at all of those. Um, there's loads to go on and see there as well. Um, I think there's probably about six, 60, 70 videos to watch. So it can certainly kill a wet afternoon if the weather's as bad as it is around here today. Uh, anyway, that's enough of me waffling. I've got loads to go and do. I hope you've all enjoyed your um, demo today. Couldn't think what I was talking about then. Um, I know it was a bit of a long-winded one, but hopefully you all enjoyed it and it made sense to you. If you've got any questions, please pop it in the comments. I will go in and have a read of those now. Have a lovely afternoon. Take care. Enjoy your weekend and we will see you again soon.